good morning students today's class we will see about the active management of labor the active management of labor was pioneered by dog kayo discrawl in 1969 as a means of reducing the number of prolonged labor its aim was to keep the labor to fewer than 12 hours and operate delivery rates to a minimum the aim seeklo to achieve a delivery of a normal healthy child with minimal physical and psychological maternal effects early anticipation recognition and management of any abnormality during the labor course the aims the principal points of active management of labor are as follows the precise beginning of labor is diagnosed the guarantee of labor not lasting long enough to allow us artificial rupture of membrane is performed routinely if dilatation of cervix is not maintained at the rate of 1 cm per hour after 3 cm plus has been reached augmentation of contraction with synthetic oxytocin is employed if dilatation does not increase at the rate mentioned above the guarantee of not being left alone in labor but also receiving continuous companionship from a midwife student or medical student progress of labor is charted on a graph called as partogram and in preparation we have to give maternal education about physiology of labor and symptoms of impending labor breathing access to adapt the mother to breathing during labor and to guard against respiratory alkalosis caused by hyperventilation the first stage three things first one is history second is examination third is active procedures history includes complete obstetric history history of present pregnancy include duration of pregnancy medical disorders during this pregnancy complication during this pregnancy as antepartum hemorrhage or any medical disease complicating pregnancies history of present labor like labor pain onset frequency and duration passage of shock fluid or blood per vagina sensation of fetal movements examination include general examination height and weight bilge maternal vital signs pulse temperature and blood pressure chest and heart examination lower limb for edema abdominal examination include frontal level frontal grip umbilical grip pelvic grips fhs scar of previous operations Pelvic examination includes cervix for the dilatation, the, cindy, the diameter of external os is measured by finger during pervaginal examination, x percent centimeter, one finger is equal to 2 centimeter, two fingers is equal to 4 centimeter and the distance result from the separation is added to the 4 centimeter in more dilatation. Effacement, position, membranes that it is subtured or intact, if unruptured, exclude cord prolapse, meconium stain liquor, presenting part and its position station presenting part investigation include if not done before if indicated blood group r typing urine albumin and sugar hemoglobin percentage and usg active procedures during the first stage include evacuation of rectum by enema to avoid uterine inertia help the descent of presenting part avoid contamination by feces during the delivery evacuation of bladder ask the patient to maturate every 2 to 3 hours if she cannot use a catheter it prevents urine inner uterine inertia and helps the descent of presenting part preparation of the vulva shape the vulva clean with soap and warm water to from above downwards swab it in the antiseptic cloth and apply a sterile pad nutrition when labor is established no oral feeding is allowed but sips of water or antacid can be given every 2 hours as to guard against bronchospasm of course if antacid vomitus is inhaled during general anesthesia Mendelssohn syndrome and as an injections may be used instead if labor delay more than 8 hours IV drip of glucose 5% or saline glucose solutions is given patient is allowed to walk during early in the first stage particularly with the intact membrane if the rest is needed the patient lies on her left lateral position to prevent inferior vena cava compression and hence placental insufficient C and fetal distress analgesia pedrin 100 mg im or epid analgesia is most commonly in use not that patient should not be bear down do, during the first stage as this is useless exhaust the patient and predispose to genital prolapse partogram it is a graphic recording the course of labor including the following observations that is mother's pulse every 30 minutes blood pressure every 2 hours temperature every 4 hours uterine contraction pulse frequency strength and duration every 30 minutes by manual palpation or better tachography is available cervical dilatation fluid in, input and output drugs including oxytocin fetus fhr every 15 minutes by pinhead stethoscope or better by 
dot on descent of the presenting part degree of molding ctg is available it is more valuable for continuous monitoring of both uterine contraction fha particularly in a high risk pregnancy advantage of partogram it is allow the right intervention in the proper time example oxytocin usage instrument delivery or cs allows different staff shifts to manage the case successfully and document all the labor events the second stage patient feels the desire, desire to defecate the contractions become more prolonged and painful reflex desire to bear down during the contractions expulsive effort to is accompanied by sustained respiratory grunt rupture of membrane although it is not specific as it may occur earlier even before the start of labor pre labor rupture of membrane or later even to the degree that fetus is delivered in an intact sac full dilatation of cervix at is 10 cm in between uterine contraction is most sure sign delivery room the patient is transferred on a wheel or trolley to the delivery room put her on the tummy position the lower abdomen upper parts of thigh vulva and perineum are swabbed with antiseptic solution sterile legs leggings and the towels are applied bearing down as the patient to bear down during the contractions and relax in between the main aim of delivery of the head is to prevent perineal lacerations to the following instruction the first one is support of perineum when the labia starts to separate by the head sterile pad is placed over the perineum and press on it with the right hand during the uterine contractions this is continued until crowning occurs to maintain flexion of the head crowning is the permanent distension of vulval ring by the fetal head like crown on the head the head does not recede back in between uterine contraction this means that bipartite diameter is just past the vulval ring and occipital prominence escape under the symphysis pubis after crowning allow slow extension of the head so that vulva is distant by the suboccipital or frontal diameter the head is allowed to extend before the crowning the vulva will be distended by occipital or frontal 1.5 cm increasing the incidence of perineal laceration Re- Retain manual upward pressure on the perineum by right hand and downward pressure on the occiput by left hand to control the extension of the head. Episiotomy it is done at crowning when the perineum is stretched to the degree that it is about to tear. Swab and aspirate the mouth and nose once the head is delivered before respiration is initiated and the liquid meconium or blood is inhaled. Coils of the umbilical cord if present around the neck are slipped over the head but if tight. or multiple they are cut between two clamps during the shoulder gentle downward traction is applied to the head till the anterior shoulder slips under the symphysis pubis the head is slipped up first to deliver the posterior shoulder first then the downwards to deliver the anterior shoulder delivery of reminds of the body usually slips without difficulty otherwise gentle traction is applied to complete delivery clamping the cord baby is held by its angles with the head downwards at the lower level than its mother for a few seconds this is contraindicated in preterm babies erythroblast of fetalysis and suspicion of intracranial hemorrhage clamping the cord this may be enhanced by milking the cord towards the baby to add about 100 ml of blood to circulation the cord is divided between two clamps to avoid bleeding from the possible second uni ovular twin third stage the delivery of the placenta by the conservative method put a alnar border of the left hand above the fundus at the level of umbilicus detect any bleeding inside the uterus known as not by rising level of the atonic uterus wait for signs of placenta separation and the descent but not do, do not massage the uterus as soon as they are detected massage the uterus to induce contraction ask the patient to bear down and push the uterus downwards to deliver the placenta Hold the placenta between two hands and roll it to make a membrane-like rope in order to not to miss a part of it. Give ergometrin 0.25 milligram or oxytocin 5 units IM after delivery of the placenta to help uterine contraction minimize blood loss. This may be given before delivery of the placenta by after delivery of the anterior shoulder. Signs of placenta separation include body of uterus becomes smaller, harder, and globular. The frontal level rises. upper segment overrides the lower uterine segment which is now distended with the placenta suprapubic bulge due to presence of the placenta in the lower uterine segment elongation of cord particularly on pressing on the uterine fundus and it does not recede back into the vagina on relieving the pressure the shop blood from the vagina active management otherwise known as brand and rose method with delivery of anterior shoulder 0.5 mg of ergometrin 
or syndometer that is ergometrium plus oxytocin is given here. When uterus contracts, put the left hand suprapubic and push the uterus suppose while general downward and backward traction is supplied on the cord by right hand. When placenta is delivered, it is raw dust. Is it a conservative method? Advantage, reduction of blood loss. Disadvantage, constriction ring may occur with retention of placenta. Evolution of the cord if and due pressure is supplied. Inversion of uterus if the fundus is pressed by the uterus is lax. Third stage of labor, the routine examination include examination of the placental membranes by exploring it on a plain surface to be sure that it is complete. If there is any missed part, exploration of uterus is done under general anesthesia. Explore the genital tract for any laceration that should be immediately repaired. Fourth stage of labor, observation for the patient, particularly ectonia of uterus and vaginal bleeding. Care of the newborn, clearance of the air passage. Newborn is placed in supine position with the head lower down. A, men, a metal or rubber or better disposable plastic catheter is used to aspirate mucus from pharynx and mouth directly by physician by mouth or by attached electric suction pump. Crying of the baby is usually occurs within the second if delayed, slapping its sore, flexion and extension of the legs and rubbing the back usually stimulate breathing. A disposable plastic umbilical clamp is supplied about 5 cm from the umbilicus to avoid possibility of tying the umbilical hernia. It is cut about 1.2 cm, 5 cm distal to the clamp. Inspect for any bleeding and if the plastic umbilical clamp is not available, two ligatures of silk are applied instead of it. Newborn dressing as well as previous position should be done in the warm place better under it in warmer to prevent heat loss which is of course rapidly after delivery increase in the metabolism. Care of the eyes, antibiotic eye drops as chloramphenicol in the eyes as a prophylaxis against ophthalmia neonatura and it is dependent upon the institutional policy. Identification of the baby by a plastic bracelet under which his mother's name is written. In spite of everyday occurrence of labor and delivery, there is a remarkable lack of scientific evidence on which the base of guidelines for care. The greatest challenges for care providers is to balance the approach to the surveillance of physiology with the one try that tries to prevent development of disease. Care should be encompassed the mother and her partner as well as the fetus and the surveillance of physiology has to be external to provide active support. This support needs to be given in a way that respects autonomy, the wishes, the hopes and the fears of pregnant woman and her partner. Providers of care need to know that warning signs of disorders and the advice given and recommendations made in such a situation must acknowledge the limitations of science. It is a moral obligation to provide effective care. It is a scientific obligation to find it out. Thank you. Thank you for listening.